Now just the other day I had a question about PSC motors. PSC motors, permanent split capacitor. Permanent split capacitor motors. What does that mean? Well, that's just a fancy way of saying that it has a capacitor, that that, that that motor has a capacitor, that uses a capacitor. Just like most of our single phase compressors, just like most of our condensers and evaporator fans that are single phase, they're gonna use a capacitor. So these capacitors, we have the two type of capacitors. We have a run capacitor and we also have a start capacitor. Right now, we're only gonna talk about the run capacitor. What is the purpose of the run capacitor? We said in a previous video that you're going to have a compressor or let's say a fan motor like this. Inside of here, you're gonna have a winding like this and then you're gonna have another winding like this. Now, one of these two windings is gonna have more resistance than the other because it has more resistance, then we're gonna say that that is going to be our start winding. The other winding on this side, which has less resistance, is going to be my run winding. Now, take a look at the other video that I did about finding out which one's your common run and start connections because I explained a little bit about the windings. But we have two windings. This connection right here, this one is gonna be common to this winding and to that winding. So we have the three connections. In a, let's say, condenser fan motor. Condenser fan motor, we're gonna have three wires coming out of it. One is going to be coming out like this. Then you have one coming out like this. And then you're gonna have this other one like here. And usually this one is going to be a brown wire. This is a brown wire here. Now the brown, simple, easy. That's the one that always goes where? That's the one that always goes to the capacitor. In this case, the run capacitor. The capacitor always feeds the start winding. Check out my other video, I explain about this, but my capacitor always feeds my start winding. Also, another thing that's gonna happen is we're going to have, let's say for example, L1 here. L1 is gonna feed common. Then we're going to have, let's say, L2 right here. And that's going to feed my capacitor. And L2 is also gonna feed my run winding. One thing I was saying that you should remember is the same line that feeds the run winding feeds the capacitor. And the capacitor always feeds my start winding. This is how they always go wired. If you wire it up another way, it's just gonna mess things up. But now since we know how this goes wired, let's talk about what it does. Let's talk about what it does. We know that we have seen this many a times in books. We know that that is our sine wave. That is our sine wave like this. So now this right here in this example is going to represent my voltage my voltage, higher voltage on this side. So the higher this goes, the higher the voltage you're gonna have. And then this is going to be time. How long does it take to go from here to here? Now here in the United States, it takes 60 hertz. 60 hertz, but what exactly does that mean? Well, what that means is that it is going to do this one complete cycle 60 times per second. So by the time we say 1001, 1002, 1003, 1004, 1005, every time we count like that, that's approximately one second, it has done this 60 times. That's pretty fast. That's really, really fast. So why do we need a capacitor and what is the purpose of all of this? Well, the capacitor, it stores and discharges the charge. It's gonna store energy and then it's gonna discharge the energy and it's gonna send it over to my start winding. When this happens, the capacitor makes the current lag some. In other words, what it does is it creates a little time delay. So now you have power coming in here and this creates a little time delay so that it hits this winding first, which is this one here. Because of that, because of having the capacitor here, 
is going to hit this one and then this one, this one and then this one. So it's going to go boom, 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 boom like that. And the magnetic field, it's going to be changing from here to here. So now when this one is going to be north, this one is going to be south. When this one becomes south, this becomes north. So the magnetic field is going to keep changing and the rotor that is inside here is going to rotate because now we're changing the magnetic field and is not the same. If we didn't have a capacitor, what would happen is we would have a north and a north here, and then a south and a south, then a north and a north, then a south and a south. So the pulse would be the same. Now there's that time delay. Because there's that time delay, this rotor actually rotates. So what I am saying is that we have this from the capacitor. This is from, let's say for example, in this case L2, but now we're gonna have another one like this and this is going to be from the capacitor right here. This is going to be from the capacitor. So now we get voltage hitting the run winding, voltage hitting the start winding. So now we can alternate between the two and we get it to rotate. So now let's say that your capacitor happens to be bad. If your capacitor is bad and you are not it's not doing anything, what's gonna happen now is you can get north on both sides, south on both sides, north on both sides, south on both sides. So that rotor, what is that rotor gonna do? It's gonna sit there and lock up. It's gonna lock up and it's not gonna do anything. Now typically, what I do when I get to a unit, if I see that the motor's locked up, I give it a spin. If I give it a spin and it takes off, there's a 90% chance that it's going to be my capacitor that's bad. Now, if the motor is completely locked up, then that tells me that is the bearings. These motors, if you can give it a spin, yes, it's going to be your capacitor that is bad, but how do we check a capacitor? We said on another video that you should use a capacitor tester. Now, some meters, they have a setting to check capacitors, and that's what you must use, a capacitor tester. So this, again, this is what a sine wave looks like. Your capacitor is going to give you this other sine wave because it slows it down, it holds it back. Because of that, we get the boom, boom effect. So we hit nip from both sides like this. If you take the capacitor out, what's gonna happen? So in other words, this capacitor just is open. You're not gonna get any power going to this winding because this, the power's not going to this winding this winding is going to be energized all by itself. When that happens, the rotor is going to lock up. And if you give it a spin, typically it will take off and it will start running. But remember, you always have to check the capacitor. You can't assume that it is bad. And how do we test the capacitor? With a capacitor tester. Now this is what they call a run capacitor. There is such a thing as a start capacitor I'm going to talk about that in another video, but this is your run capacitor. That's basically what it does. This is what it's designed to do inside of the motor. And on the next video, I'll see if I can talk about the star capacitors and tell you more about them. Okay. I hope this helped. My name is Julio. Please follow me on Facebook, subscribe to my channel on, on, the, on YouTube, and hope to see you here. And if you have any suggestions, please let me know what it is that you would like to see, and I'll see if I can make the videos. Again, my name is Julio from Aircon Academy. Thank you.